Gates That Open, LLC, is America's leading designer and distributor of automatic gate openers and access controls for residential and agricultural gate applications. GTO's Mighty Mule Gate Openers have been America's number one do-it-yourself automatic gate openers since 1987 and are convenient, affordable, and as you will soon find, easy to install. Thanks for purchasing the GTO Mighty Mule 500 Easy Gate Opener. This video will provide you with an overview of how to install your gate opener. It is to be used only as a visual aid in conjunction with your manual. Watch this demonstration video and read the entire installation manual before beginning your installation. Please pay close attention to the important safety instructions. When correctly installed, your Mighty Mule will provide you with many years of safe, reliable service. The Mighty Mule 500 Easy Gate Opener is designed for installation on a pull-to-open single-leaf gate that opens into your property. If your gate needs to open out from the property, you will need an optional push-to-open bracket. Call our sales department for more information. The Mighty Mule 500 Gate Opener features adjustable obstruction sensing. This safety feature makes the gate stop and reverse direction within two seconds after coming into contact with an obstruction. Refer to your manual for instructions on how to set stall force settings. Pay close attention to this adjustment if you are installing the opener on a heavy gate or a gate installed in windy conditions. Your Mighty Mule 500 gate opener also has a convenient adjustable auto-close feature. After the gate reaches the fully open position, it can be set to remain open up to two minutes before automatically closing. You can override the auto-close feature at any time with your personal transmitter by pressing the button, resulting in the gate closing immediately. You will receive your gate opener with the auto-close feature deactivated. Refer to your manual for instructions on how to activate this feature. The Mighty Mule 500 comes with an 18-volt transformer for maintaining the system's battery charge. Do not connect the transformer directly to the battery. The Mighty Mule 500 is also solar capable for solar applications, you will need to purchase at least one Mighty Mule 5 Watt solar panel charging kit. When using solar to charge the battery, you will not need the 18 volt transformer. If you will be using the transformer, you will need to purchase enough 16 gauge multi stranded direct burial low voltage wire to connect the opener to the transformer. Measure the distance from where you will mount the Mighty Mule gate opener to the electrical outlet for the transformer. Do not use more than 1,000 feet of low voltage wire. If your gate is more than 1,000 feet from an AC power source, you will need to call a certified electrician to bring the AC power within 1,000 feet or use solar power. Refer to your manual for important information regarding these two different ways to charge the battery on your system. Wire coming from the ground to the control box should be run through PVC conduit to protect it from lawnmowers, weed eaters, and grazing animals. Make certain that you have all the parts and tools you will need. Refer to your installation manual to confirm that you have everything and to assess whether or not you may need certain accessories or additional materials and hardware as required for your specific type of gate. Before beginning the installation, make certain that your gate is in proper working order, plumb, level, and swinging freely on well-lubricated hinges. Ball-bearing hinges should be used on all gates weighing over 250 pounds. Never use wheels on your gate. Your gate should be installed on a fence post that is firmly secured in the ground. We recommend positioning the opener near mid-height of your gate. It may be necessary to add a horizontal or vertical cross member to provide a stable area where the post bracket assembly can be mounted. On round posts of 6 inches or larger, the post pivot bracket may not be necessary for the installation, allowing for the post bracket to be mounted by itself. In this demonstration, we will be using the post pivot bracket. Insert the 3 8 inch by 2 inch bolt through the center hole of the post bracket and the post pivot bracket. Hand tighten a 3 8 inch flat washer and nut on the end of the bolt. Attach the post bracket assembly to the rear mount of the opener arm using the clevis pin, bushing, and hairpin clip. Attach the gate bracket to the front mount of the opener arm using the clevis pin, bushing, and hairpin clip.
With the gate in its open position, hold the opener arm level and temporarily clamp the post bracket assembly to the gate post and gate bracket to the gate in their approximate positions. Use a carpenter's level to level the opener. The post bracket assembly's position determines the leverage of the opener, the clearance between the opener arm and the gate, as well as travel distance of the gate to the fully closed position. Be sure the position allows for two inches of clearance between the gate and the opener in both the open and closed position. This clearance and distance is very important for automated gate safety as well as the life of your gate opener. If you are mounting the Mighty Mule 500 on a masonry column, refer to the column instruction information in the installation manual. Remove the hairpin clip, clevis pin, and bushing from the front mount and the gate bracket. Close the gate while supporting the opener arm. Visually align the opener with the gate bracket to see if there will be enough clearance when the gate is closed. If not, rotate the post pivot bracket to a position that will give the required clearance, while still allowing one of the post pivot bracket holes to line up with a post bracket hole. You can turn the post pivot bracket over to give you more adjustment options. Now return the gate and opener to the open position and recheck the clearance in the open position. Make additional changes until you achieve the required clearances and distance. See the instructional manual for details. Secure the post pivot bracket and post bracket alignment with the 5 16 inch by 1 and 3 quarter inch bolt, washer, and nut. Since the post bracket carries the entire thrust of the active Mighty Mule, it is absolutely necessary that it be mounted with bolts that completely penetrate the fence posts. Recheck the gate and post bracket positions and opener arm level. Mark reference points for bolt holes in the middle of the bracket slots, so there will be some room for adjustment when permanently mounting the brackets. Remove the opener arm and brackets from the gate and fence post. Drill 3 8 inch holes in the fence post as marked. Use the 3 8 inch by 8 inch bolts, washers, and nuts to attach the post bracket assembly. Drill 3 8 inch holes in the gate cross member. Mount the gate bracket with the 3 8 inch by 3 inch bolts, washers, and nuts. Cut off excess bolt extending beyond the tight nuts on the gate and post brackets. This completes the installation of the gate opener's mounting hardware. Attach the opener to the securely bolted post bracket assembly and gate bracket. Make a final check that the opener is level and make adjustments if necessary. The type of gate you have will determine the type of hardware you need to attach the stop plate to your gate. Use U-bolts if you have a tube or chain link gate. Use screws or bolts for wood or metal gates. Remove the opener from the gate and move the gate to the closed position. Place the closed position stop plate on the end of the gate frame at mid height. Slide the stop plate toward the fence post until they touch. Now completely tighten the stop plate hardware. Move the gate to its open position and reattach the opener arm. Verify that it is still level and adjust if necessary. Remove the control box cover. Position the control box on the mounting area. Be certain to mount the box at least 3 feet from AC power and 3 feet off the ground. Position the battery in the control box as shown in your manual. For solar applications, a second battery is recommended. Connect the battery leads from the control board to the battery, red wire to the positive terminal, and black wire to the negative terminal. Strip approximately 3 16 inch of insulation from each of the seven wires in the power cable for the opener and twist the exposed wire tightly. Loosen the strain relief locking nut at the bottom of the control box. Insert approximately 6 inches of the power cable through the strain relief and retighten it until the power cable locks into place. Insert each of the seven colored cable wires into the corresponding color terminals marked Master Cable. Secure each of the wires. Install the receiver within 10 feet of the control box, above any obstructions, and in line of sight between remote and antenna. 
If you are mounting your receiver on a metal fence, mount it on a piece of wood. Mounting on metal may cause interference, and the receiver may not work properly. In this demonstration, we will be using the 18-volt transformer to maintain the battery charge. Refer to your installation manual for solar panel installation instructions. The charging source is connected to the control board using the 16-gauge dual-conductor multi-stranded direct burial wire. Route the 16-gauge transformer wire from the AC outlet to the control box and bring it up to the control box through PVC conduit to protect it from lawnmowers, weed eaters, or grazing animals. With the power switch on the control box in the off position, strip 3 16 of an inch of insulation off the ends of the low voltage wire and twist tightly. Attach these ends to the terminals marked Power Inputs on the control board. The wires can be inserted into either terminal regardless of color. Be certain not to let the exposed wires touch each other. Tighten the set screws against the exposed ends of the wires. At the AC outlet, strip one half inch of insulation from the ends of the low voltage wire. Attach these ends to the transformer terminals. Be certain not to let the exposed wires touch each other. Plug the transformer into the electrical outlet. We strongly recommend using a surge protector with the transformer. If you are using an outdoor electrical outlet, it must have a weatherproof electrical outlet housing. Before making any changes to the four dip switch settings in the control box, make sure the power switch on the control box is in the off position. Dip switch 1 controls the soft start or stop feature and is set in the on position at the factory. Dip switch 2 controls the warning buzzer feature and is also set in the on position at the factory. Dip switch 3 controls the push or pull to open feature and is set in the off position for pull to open installations at the factory. Dip switch 4 applies to dual gate systems only. Refer to your installation manual for detailed instructions. To achieve the optimum closed limit setting, complete the following four steps. Step 1. With the gate in the fully open position, make sure the on-off switch on the control box is in the on position. Step 2. Press the button on the opener remote to close the gate. Press the remote button again when the gate is in the desired closed position. Step 3. In the control box, press and hold the button labeled Learn Mast Limit for 5 seconds or until the alarm sounds. Step 4. Press the button on the remote transmitter and allow the gate to return to the fully open position. The closed limit will be set up upon the gate reaching the fully open position. Test, and if needed, reset and start over. The obstruction setting on the Mighty Mule 500 control board, also referred to as the stall force setting, comes from the factory set at minimum. It controls the amount of force the opener will apply against an obstruction before it stops and reverses direction. In many gate installations, this setting will need to be adjusted to compensate for the weight and size of different gates and wind conditions. The stall force setting on the control board works like the volume control on a radio. Use a small slotted screwdriver to adjust the stall force sensitivity to the point where the gate operates without obstructing from its own weight or wind conditions. The auto close is an optional feature and comes disabled from the factory. The auto close timer on the control board determines how long the gate will remain open before automatically closing. The limits range from off to 120 seconds and are adjusted with a small slotted screwdriver. Use a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the transmitter cover and expose the transmitter dip switches. Each of the nine switches can be placed in three different positions to set your new personal code. Once the dip switches have been set, replace and close the cover.
Press and hold the transmitter button while simultaneously pressing the Learn RMT button on the control board for five seconds or until the alarm sounds. The new transmitter code is now programmed. Attach the warning signs included with your installation package to each side of the gate to alert the public. Automatic gate openers produce high levels of force, and it is your responsibility to post warnings. Be certain to carefully read and follow all safety precautions, warnings, and installation instructions to ensure the safe system design, installation, and use of this product. Keep your installation manual for future reference. It contains important installation information, a troubleshooting guide, and the Mighty Mule warranty. Should you lose your manual or it is destroyed, you can download a copy from the Mighty Mule website at www.mightymule.com. Visit the Mighty Mule website at www.mightymule.com to learn more about other Mighty Mule gate openers and accessories, to locate a Mighty Mule retailer near you, download Mighty Mule manuals, obtain technical support contact information, and a host of other online resources. Thanks again for purchasing the GTO Mighty Mule 500 Easy Gate Opener. We are confident that this product will give you years of trouble-free, controlled access to your property.